Welcome to the Out There channel, live stream 414. Hopefully everybody's been good since the last uh, stream. Not the, the C19 or I'm searching, I'm loving, I'm finding love, I'm hiding, I'm searching. I'm loving, I'm finding love. I'm Dark side. Let the bait control your body. At the beginning, there was red. Come follow me, deep down. I'm searching, I'm loving, I'm finding love. Hello, good to be back. Okay, just usual rules there. Uh, we haven't had to enforce them for a while. Because we don't get many joining us. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll see how I go. But it seems I've bit my tongue in the night and it's swollen up. So forgive me if I can't pronounce some words more than normal. So, uh, because yeah, it's amazing how much your tongue affects how you talk. Uh, not too sure if there's anyone going to be joining us. But we'll find out, I guess. Um, better type up the welcome message here, and it'll show up on the screen in a minute. Welcome to the OT channel, live, 414 already, uh, cameras, from Fleur to night vision. So let's go over those so we understand how they work and how we can use them for sky watching. Uh, there's quite a lot of technical stuff to them. Uh, see how much I can cover on it, but I try and keep it to lay terms. Um, also, we've got the Phoenix lights thing that come out with John, uh, Black Vaults. Uh, I had a chance to look at the new images. Phoenix lights, new images, alleged. And the sector. Okay. So it should be now on the main screen. Yep, looking good. Uh, how's the audio sounding? Right, let me just do a check. One, two, uh, three, has four. Audio sounding. Right, let me just do a check. One, two, uh, three, has four. Audio sounding. Yep. And then we get infinity. <laughs> it keeps repeating. <laughs> Sounds all right. Um, yeah. So let's get organised here. Uh, this is unscripted, of course. Uh, straight off my head. <laughs> and I may make the odd mistake, uh, but we generally correct ourselves or we'll post it in the description. Um, but yeah, um, I'm also learning as we go. Uh, don't claim to be an expert in anything, but it uh, doesn't stop us being self learners. And once we all understand. Uh, the science and technology out there, the better we will become understanding what's in the videos, right? Um, so, first up again, uh, the subs have sort of stalled, as you can see there, but they've sort of gone up a couple in the recent couple of days. Uh, the view counts are pretty constant, and if not, um, I think it's quadrupled on YouTube since uh, Google Movie. 
Uh, speaking of Google Movie, I was meant to read out this last time. It was a comment I got posted, and uh, I don't know what's happening with Google lately, but it's been deleting all my comments. Um, it's like I'm being really censored now. Um, pretty sad, really. Uh, even if my pin coin. You know, you pin a coin, a comment, um, it should stick, it shouldn't vanish, right? But mine have been vanishing. Which is very annoying because my pin coin comments I normally put in the the chat from Twitch underneath YouTube ones. And it makes it really hard for me to uh, debate or offer information on other people's videos as well if my comments keep vanishing. Um, let's see, um, I if I can show you an example, might still be happening. Uh, just pause that there. Actually, I probably don't need to bring up that comment, but it'd probably be easy to zoom in. Uh, what's going on? Oh. Time to do that. What's going on here? Alright, uh, so we did get a few nasty comments. We're gonna go check that check out. Uh also I've added chapters now to the last two lives on and goof on. So now you can click on that and uh you should be able to jump to the various points in the movie. As you can see, there's quite a few little bullets there. Um, you can see the trolls that are protecting them out there. Probably didn't even bother watching it. Well, understand um, what kind of person he really is. But yeah, we got this uh, comment from the jackal, which I'll read out from the other screen. Uh, looks like maybe my comments will come back. No. Hey, finally it didn't delete. <laughs> I posted this reply here for the third time, and it looks like this one finally stuck. So maybe they fixed it, because uh, I did go to Team YouTube, and they admitted that other people have complained about it. Um, censorship is getting worse, you know, all this hidden background stuff that they're doing. Uh, where's my Twitter account, that one? Yep. Got it around the wrong way, I think. So, now uh, let's see. I think I've reposted it here. Uh, just a Phoenix one, we'll come to that. All right, yeah, that's another thing that came out too. Um, Giffen was putting up an image from a distort from a car window, which was terribly distorted. <laughs> and I'm not hiding because uh, I used to put up my image, and then I decided uh, why give ammo to haters out there. So I don't. Um, so yeah, just had to do a wee bit of research. Um, you could easily have found my images on Twitter as well as um, YouTube. So yeah, that was quite funny, really. I I, I call it karma. Uh, he was trying to a character attack me again, calling me fat, obviously, and uh, saying I was toothless. But I've actually got all my teeth, um, including wisdom, and. Uh, um, that's part of the problem of biting my tongue, of course. <laughs> um, too many teeth. If anything, I need less of them, probably. And they're pretty sharp. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I didn't lose my teeth in my 40s like he did. 
Probably someone punched him out with his mouth, but he's always attacking. Um, my weight does go up and down, and of course uh, the pills that I take and insulin affects greatly my um, hunger, as well as um, putting on weight. So it's a constant battle. Uh, some people find it hard putting on weight, and others just put it on... A drop of a hat. I never claim to be perfect, <laughs> and uh, certainly not um, huge, super huge person. <laughs> but you wouldn't want to mess around with me because I did weight training, and uh, um, if I get really violent, um, I can lift two hundred kgs no problem. So, um, but. Uh, Nowadays, because of my back pain, um, that's not likely to be happening. But if it comes to survival mode, uh, you never know what I could do. I used to lift up, lift up the caravan um, and just pull it along. So just uh, be aware of that if you want to mess around with me. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I was trying to find that Twitter repost here yeah, I think it was after that oh, here we go, it was just underneath thanks for the tag, we've seen similar reports about missing comments and our team was looking into this and because uh, I said to him <laughs> Hey Google, please stop deleting and ghosting my pinned comments. I've always, always do these. No reason to delete. So I was quite courteous. I was almost ready there to f and swear. <laughs> you know how much I hate swearing, but uh, yes, yeah, those people can trigger it. So yeah. Um, Also, I did actually have a corner of a, probably a couple of years ago, I tried to put myself in a corner, although I didn't like to be lit up like um, all these attention seekers, hosters out there. So I was in the dark, so to speak, but uh, um, some of them, you could see me uh, laying on the bed there hosting uh, the presentations. So those uh, live streams are out there as well, uh, maybe a handful of them. But again, if you watched my channel from the beginning, you would know I was putting myself out there uh, here and now and, now and then. So yeah, I was a wee bit insulted again. But it's funny, uh, as I was saying, he, he was doing that a day before I put it, released the movie. It was like good karma, I think. Karma was about to bite him. So, yeah. Um, looks like they may have fixed the problem now. We have to see. Um, but also, the last um, live stream, we also have got... Um, a load Unexplained of, um, aerial phenomena, try to help us. A load of bookmarks, right? Makes it a bit easier to jump to the section that you wanted to. So if you only got a certain time to watch the first five, then you could watch the next five next day or whatever. Uh, there's no excuse, you know, for 10 minute videos nowadays. And low attention span and ufology. Okay, so what we're we going to do, I re read out that comment, that's right. So here's a comment uh, I got about Goofon, which is quite interesting. Gives an insight into his real character, I think. And you can see it's a fairly big comment. And when he posted this, it vanished. And I only had a copy of an email, so I reposted what I got in email, and it vanished. <laughs> so we kept on trying, and eventually we got it to stick, and I managed to pin it uh, from my regular comment. And uh, I told him, oh, just post, go and post it on um, BitChute, because we don't have this kind of crap happening of censorship like we do on YouTube. 
So he did, I think. Um, so you have a read of this, what this guy had to say about him. I've been both friends and enemies with Rich, and I did my best to help him as a producer, and the guy turned on me to split from the network I co-owned, which now I own outright as my business partner died last year. Uh, sorry to hear that. In July the 3rd, but uh, Rich here was on our network. He decided he wanted to split to Fringe FM, which is an online station they got some very good shows and stuff I know I am friends with a few of those guys. Rich thought they were actually live on FM <laughs> worldwide, which is ridiculous. And yeah, well, FM only goes a certain distance. So you'd have to be on AM or shortwave <laughs> uh, if you know about radio or uh, internet radio, of course. Um, but obviously we're talking about a few years ago here, um, before internet radio was a sort of a th new new thing, wasn't it, uh, recently? And when the host and owners of Fringe FM asked me if it's okay for him to be on their network, I told them to take him, but warned he would do to them what he did to me when the time came and sure enough within a few months I got an email stating I was 100% right on Rich and how he did almost textbook what I told them he would do to them. Shocked as they were that, that it was like a predicted As uh, shocked as it was, I predicted it would, word by word, okay. But what uh, they didn't know is I've known Rich for many years, and years before this event, uh, we met on blog talk radio, and Rich hated a friend of mine, and so when he had a shot back, then he turned another friend of mine against me and they both ganged up on me. Sounds basically what happened to me <laughs> uh, with my co-hosts. Okay? I eventually forgave both dudes, which is the same as I've done. Um, I don't hate anybody. I know people have their reasons for losing it <laughs> and attacking. Um... Uh, always, I've always looked after the people, my friends, uh, even concerned about their habits and uh, their lifestyle and health, and I know it's going to affect them uh, if they don't change their ways, because uh, I've been through that with also alcohol myself, um, and uh, smoking in my family, a lot of people have died from it including cancer. Uh, so this thing that smoking doesn't cause cancer is nonsense. It does. <laughs> it depends on your immune systems. Uh, of course, uh, everything's about the immune system. Turn of mine against me and they both ganged up on me. Eventually forgave both dudes and I'm still friends with the other dude and like I said I had Rich on my network and even produced his show since he didn't know how to do it and this is this was after I spent months before showing him how to use the software uh, forget it mate I've tried to educate him too and it's just he doesn't clueless I think he's got a lot of people helping him. Uh, when he 
relocated his um to Florida, right, and he set up his PC, right, he had the screens around the wrong way, all he had to do was switch the cables, right, because each monitor's got an ID, and Windows locks screen one to um, a certain socket, right, <laughs> if you switch, switch them around. Um, maybe he's breaking down in the, in the movie. And then the, the ISP guy put in a Cat5e instead of putting the 6 cable in. Well, Cat5e uh, will go up to 1 gigabit. Uh, but a Cat6 is always guaranteed to give you 1 gigabit or higher. So it's better to go with Cat6 if you can. In fact, it's better to go with Cat8 now, um, which allows uh, a thicker cable. It's less likely to get uh, interference for it. So it's all right saying 5e will do the job, which it might, but it always can be slower, of course. And if you bend it and all that sort of business, or you get some burst of EMF. So the technician uh, was wrong in what he did there. But he said that's all they supplied. Me, I would have just uh, gone to the shop and just bought some cable. And stored it from there. Well, you still can. You know, you can still connect it from the net end unit, uh, fiber unit, or whatever they have in America, cable, isn't it? To your computer. But short distances with Cat 5e should be okay. It should be better handle one gigabit constantly again it depends you know it depends on you, how you set it up anyway getting back from that <laughs> um we could uh, talk about cat 5 cables up to cat 8 if you want to if you want to learn more about it um it's always stuff to learn He couldn't figure it out then, and after a few months, he came back and going, I produced for him to help him. And what's this? Eventually forgave both dudes. I said I had Rich on my network, and even produced his show since he didn't know how to do it. And this was after I spent months... Sh before showing him how to use the software and he went off uh, went off his show for a while because he got mad he couldn't figure it out well he does that even now on live shows doesn't he when it goes wrong on OBS and whatnot and after a few months he came back and again I produced for him to help him and he repaid me by not just leaving the network, but talking shit about me <laughs> on the final show. I was with him on air and then on shows following. This is the first point, uh, post I've done since that shit went down. Because someone sent me this video laughing at how stupid Richard is cast on here. And after laughing at the idiotic shit he does, here I had to post. Keep up the good fight. And by the way, Rich and his UFO videos are all shite. <laughs> uh, he's a liar. I know that. And honestly, I don't trust him. Yep. Uh, but I will say this, he's not very smart, yeah, I know that, <laughs> and so I doubt he knows how to CGI anything, correct? Uh, he does often confuse satellites and planes for UFOs, well, even planes for Tic Tacs. <laughs> um, although, the last show where Scott Brown was trying to push a bug... <laughs> Claiming that it had, couldn't be a bug because it wasn't in the frames either side, which is nonsense. Because uh, uh, I think it was r random timing, didn't he say? Well, less uh, one third of a second. A bug can travel f quite fast in one third of a second and still skip all those frames. 
but it could have quite easily been just a bit of stick that fell in front of the lens uh, when he took that single frame going gravity downwards. Um, when I had a look at that video uh, photo of his, it wasn't uh, blurred. So to me, that had to be within the focal point. But how far away from the cam camera, I don't know. All the settings there. But it still could have been something like a seed pod or something. A bird was flying past at the time and dropped a stick. That sort of thing, right? You always got to keep in mind, you know, your uh, face travels so fast, but also when you're taking random photographs of the sky and not seeing it with your own eyes, uh, means it could be something really small that fell in front of the camera. But um, Rich did actually state that, didn't he? Um, I was a bit shocked that he actually got that one right with uh, Scott Brown, because Scott Brown... But why is Scott Brown on there? It looks like he's trying to plug his own channel to try and get visitors from Rich to his. Uh, it's all in each other's pockets, like I was saying in the last live show, right? So, yeah, uh, that was a really good comment there. And Google tried to delete it. <laughs> and just stick it down there. And we'll just um, go on to the Phoenix Light one now. Okay. Not that one. Okay, so. Uh, I posted all the bits and pieces in the... Um, in the same... Twitter comment here. So I'll just uh, open this up properly. It's kind of going to. Um, we'll, we'll skim through it. I won't listen to all of it. Photos. So basically. New 1997 Phoenix Light Surface. The investigation. See description of additional evidence. Looks like he's changed the title. Um, I don't think he's pinned his comment unless Google have deleted it. <laughs> Which is, uh, he did have a pinned comment there at one stage. Uh, looks like all my comments have vanished. <laughs> uh, we're being suppressed, guys. Uh, just be aware of it. YouTube's not the best place to be. Uh, these guys will work that out eventually. Oh. Uh, something going on with the mouse here. Let me just refix it. I uh, started scaling up it, which I really hate. It's going really slow for some reason. Look at that. Uh, what's going on? We're being hacked again. Don't be surprised. Okay, I'll be back to normal. Yep. Okay, uh, how's uh, the string going? Well, the string seems to be constant today. So, uh, yeah, where do we begin in this? Reddit, which you will find me uh, in there quite a bit. A lot of great people in there. And a new thread had started in the last day or two from the recording of this of new photographs. These photographs were allegedly from the 1997 Phoenix Lights incident. Now, that's a case that has intrigued me for quite some time. In fact, 
I started the Black Vault in 1996, so the Phoenix Lights essentially was right there in the forefront of me doing what I do uh, with the Freedom of Information Act. And I, uh, my connection to the Phoenix Light story is I tried to get Luke Air Force Base to admit that they were the ones that dropped the flares. And in fact, they gave me a written response that they did not drop the flares and had no idea where that original story came from. Now, it's morphed over the years. There was some classified mission with the Maryland National Guard that, that dropped well, be that as it may, whatever you might think about it, there are very few visuals from this case. There were two separate incidents that night, one in approximately the 8, 8.30 time frame and the second, uh, the 10 o'clock time frame uh, in, uh, in the timetable there in, in Phoenix. So there were two separate incidents, which not many people realize about that particular case. While this particular uh so the 10 o'clock was the flares dropped behind the mountain range, and that's why they went out. The lights went out in a strange order because they were going falling behind the range. Uh, instead of the first one lit should be the, the first one to go out, right? Uh, that always got me until I realised there was a mountain range there. Uh, the 8 o'clock one, people talked about a big craft that blocked out the starlights. You know... Um, silently drifted over top of them saying it was massive like football stadium size or a couple of football stadium sizes and it blocked out the starlight going through so um, you wouldn't expect when you were taking pictures of that which there were none well at least there's some hidden out there because um it's about to see the backgrounds and uh, sky but behind so um Carry thread on. and and these new photos ultimately ended up two that were posted on reddit or at least two that i saw anyway um i was intrigued by it i wanted to reach out because at first glance they didn't seem fake to me they didn't seem like a hoax and generally you can peg them pretty quick but i didn't put a whole lot of time into let's call it a forensic analysis of the photos i saw that reddit was already doing that and i didn't want to essentially taint so to speak my um thought or or my okay so here comes the photographs and there's the fourth seemingly identical to the one forensic analysis you guys may be a little bit aware now with reddit exploding on analyzing these photos uh, a little bit keep in mind i record uh, so i haven't seen the reddit post myself i don't think he's re uh, posted it here in the link no. Okay. Um, no reddits. So that's pretty bad of them. But um, sometimes, like I keep saying, it's best to look at a case with uh, fresh eyes. So you're not tainted by what other people are saying. So I looked at these with fresh eyes. Because uh, uh, to me, it looked like individual lights, not a single craft. And yeah, so I wanted this to check it. Recorded that uh, that interview prior to really diving in because again, I wanted more of that just more sincere interaction without having uh, the taint of, of internet noise and rumors and allegations and all that stuff. So here is my interview with the witness. Here it is. So join. Okay. Actually, we don't want the interview. We want the pictures first. Okay. Uh, must be here somewhere. Me. Now I'm going to go through all four of them so you can see them. This was the first. Uh, so if we take that, uh, let's just um, run it through quickly ourselves. So we do the usual snapshot or a chunk of it. Actually, probably should get rid of that uh, right in first. Hang on. Uh, we we'll include that light there as a reference point. So this is what I did. Uh, but I didn't keep all the photos because I thought I'd repeat it. All my outcomes. So there doesn't look like the Phoenix lights there, does it? Um, 
to me that looks like some lights are coming from a far away here from lower down and gradually moving towards us and going upwards so to me that first frame straight away stuck out as illuminated um, balloons and if you have a look at them I don't think they're uh, Chinese lanterns so I did con consider that but we're talking about 1997 technology here so we'll just run through it and the problems I had uh, ping yep okay so let's have a look at the first one here and we can then get a rough idea because um, this one here I think was the closest and brightest one uh, I haven't got it in clipboard, I've got to drag it on. Open new. So, who's out there? No one. So, straight away you can see here the graininess, which you generally get with, especially those early digital cameras. But a lot of the early ones had uh, CCD and didn't suffer some of the artifacts you'd get with the CMOS sensors. Because um, you got global shutter rather than rolling shutter. So I suspect this is CCD, uh, like my camera is. And it just saps the batteries dry quite quickly. And uh, that was another reason to go to CMOS technology. So we can run that through, right, through the filters and see that um, that the photo is legit right we can we will be able to pick out possible photoshop uh, pixels uh, quality and the background uh, was it not working okay I'll try that again so we want to do color swap so blacks and all that we can change the different colors on the screen because uh, there are multiple shades of black and whites of course uh, why is it not working though something strange going on just try select all is it working now Aha, uh -huh. okay. Um, of course, I may spot something I didn't see first time, so that's sometimes good to repeat uh, a re edit as well. So let's see if I've made any mistakes. So on that one there, um, they're not perfect circles, but um, some of them pretty close to being perfect circle. And you can see the background there looks really constant, right? Uh, we've got a street lamp down here, a slightly different color white to these ones up here. Because uh, they should be on the same curve, right? The same color swap curve. Now you can see it's definitely the street light is a different color to the lights in the sky. And to me, that looks pretty constant to a real photograph. I'm just running through all the different filters there. Uh, nothing's popping out like a block around something, like it's cut and paste job. Uh, 1997 was uh, was that when the first Photoshop came out? So, but the question is, was this really taken in 1997? Even could it have been taken ten years after? 
So yeah, we'll go through that um, thing. So it looks pretty constant to me, right? Um, looks like it's a legit photograph. So let's um, grab one of these and see how perfect the circles are. So the question is, was the guy honest and mistaken what he was seeing, like uh, most of the people out there that submit these photographs, or did he actually purposely hoax it somehow with reflections? Uh, to me, it doesn't look like reflections, um, but we only looked at one photograph. Like, um, we're not seeing, like, uh, like it's through a car window where you see his face being reflected back or some sort of other light refraction happening, reflection, uh, copy, paste, new image, and uh, let's see how constant the size is on this light source, okay you can see doesn't look like there's smoke coming off it um, when we're seeing smoke or flares it's been quite drastic uh, certainly got some overexposure going here so let's uh, dumb it down a wee bit okay And uh, we've cut down some of the brightness now and atmospherics. Obviously, um, there's water vapor in the air, uh, especially at night time. Now you can start to see here that this it looks fairly constant in the shape. Seems to have a couple dimples on it but it seems to have these edges coming in here which almost suggests it was like um, a balloon right where it's sort of been blown up Now let's see how constant shape it is. Oop. It's not bad, is it? Kind of fits. Um, a weather type bl size balloon or wedding balloon. Uh, I'm not sure if I put any examples up. I think I may have. But uh, we can just Google it fresh. White um, 36 inch wedding balloon. There you go, you got these big ones. You can see how big they are to the person. Uh, latex ones. Uh, there you go, you can see they're quite big. So the closest one kind of looks like this one here. Now you can see how illuminated they look. Uh, just in sunlight uh, but what if you threw a, a, a light source inside 
uh, which they do with LEDs now. Uh, but you probably could have done it with any sort of light source back in those days, even uh, filament Christmas. Well, a little mini torch bulb, but uh, the battery would have, wouldn't last so long as LEDs do. But it's still possible. Uh, so, are we looking at a latex balloon or a mylar balloon here? Uh, with some distortion from atmospherics. It's hard to be sure, but it does look like it's sort of got some dark patches here. It could be crinkly. I don't know if there's any white latex ones for winds. It's a uh, uh, mylar, I mean. White. Oh, Myla, wooden points. Uh, we've got the silver ones. The silver heart shaped ones. And we've got the big white ones again with helium, and you can see that they, um, can anchor them down with little weights, uh, also with balloons filled with water is another way and they can put graffiti in here so when they want to take them outside they can pop them and of course some people like to let them loose of course uh, so there are some white mylar ones here, this is a mister and they have a sort of like a crinkly outside too so not too sure what they would look like if you put some light source on them. There's one here. Uh, whether they had those around 1997, I don't know. But I would be more inclined to think, there you go, there's one. See, so it's got the crinkly things going around. It's not a perfect circle. Uh, so that's why if we look at the image here, it kind of looks like it's got crinkly edges where it's brighter and dimmer. But I think maybe it might be just atmospherics. And you can see there's a brighter bit here too. So it's definitely three dimensional. Uh, it's sunken in there. Looks like it's sunken in there to me. Which you don't get with latex, which is kind of interesting. Let's just grab another one and have a look. This one's slightly further away, but smaller. Size it up. Okay. So it looks a wee bit more distorted. Uh, out of focus, of course, and overexposed. So let's uh, adjust that down. So the same as the other one. And you can see it looks very really similar. So he has some curvature happening. It also looks like it's got dimples in.
Oh, there we go. Uh, kind of fits being in a white balloon to me. Um, with some of the edge being distorted through atmospherics, maybe. I don't think it's a, a crumply Milo balloon. Back, not back then, anyway. And it doesn't fit Chinese lantern, right? So we know Chinese lanterns are more a boxy type shape. Uh, like uh, Chinese lanterns are more. Uh, let's see, not that shape there, but around the other way. So Chinese lanterns are more like that shape with a round bit over the top here. So straight away we can rule out. Oh, Chinese lanterns. Oh, okay, we need a circle there. <laughs> it looks like a coffin. So it normally has a round rounded top to it. But like that, you know, and also it'd have a wireframe making a circle down the bottom too. And of course they're about the size of humans too, these um, Chinese landings. So it fits definitely more a lighted balloon. And then a, a light source. Okay, if we go to the light source here and compare the light source. Obviously it's some sort of street light. And I'll paste it here. Anyway. Do I rotate it? Okay. It's not as bright. Uh, you can see also uh, we know it's not gas, but it's also distorting around it, right? Uh, let's get rid of that. So it's not gas given off from these, but it must have some atmospherics. Really fine water particles in the air that's distorting uh, the light coming off it. And we can see here, it looks like it's reflecting off. Uh, maybe the post itself here coming downwards, something like that. There, uh, probably going all the way up to there. Now this is where you need um, daytime photographs as well. You should always go back there the next day and take some daylight photographs. And so you can overlay the positions, right? And see what these actually looked like because that gives you more reference points. Like do these have like caps on them? Alright. Uh, what can we do for a cap? Well, circle, I suppose. Like, um, are they sort of lights, lights like that that shine downwards? If you know what I mean. So we know that's a street lamp there, which is good, because there's some reference point and another light light source to compare the brightness. So these are a lot brighter than the street lamps are. Uh, does that mean it's closer to us? 
Uh, it's possible. So how bright is this one here in this photograph? Uh, that's the far away blue. Uh, deselect. Flatten. Okay. So looking at the brightness of that to that, uh, you can see that balloon is definitely dimmer, right? So that's the furthest away. This could be closer in front of that lamp, or they can simply just be brighter. Uh, so, yeah, this is a problem with 2D. <laughs> um, and older technology, uh, we've got no, we've got no depth perception. Uh, if we had someone taking a photograph from over here that way gives the idea if these are actually closer over the car park i think he was in a car park security guard apparently anyway so to me they fit constantly with a balloon Uh, do we need to keep any of that? <laughs> mm. I suppose um, I might just keep that one for thumbnail or something. Although I normally just take a screen snapshot, don't I? Oh, that will do. Don't want to spend too long on it. Spends four hours looking on a dot. Four hours. Wow, that's what, how long it takes. That's how long it takes. Yeah. At least I'm thorough. Hey guys. Uh, maybe we'll save that one too. YouTube, so we'll save it back over the top of one. All right, so. So he's now going to show us the next image. Here's your second. Now you notice suddenly the balloons change direction. Or... What's going on here? So before it was going up in a straight line. Uh, maybe this one's moved up and another one's been released. Uh, that one's drifted forward, maybe, and that one's drifted backwards. So as it gets up, as you know, air currents can change different directions. Or there may be a slightly faster slipstream here that pushes these ones forward. Uh, generally, it can change direction 200 feet above. So, this looks like it, what's happened here, isn't it? Looks like another one's got close enough to the camera to be seen now. And another distant one's been released. 
And those four lights that we had, was it four? Let me just check. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, here, see, um, we'd have to explain it with air currents. Or there may be some unheadedness happening here. Is that really the sequence of events? To me, I th thought it might be going back the other direction. Starting off here and gradually moving this direction away rather than going this direction because that would make more sense. So that one that was at the top here is going shooting off in the air current. And these two have moved. But that's what I did next is um, I merged all the images together to see what it looked like. Here's your third. You can see how much it jumped from the first two. And there's the fourth, seemingly identical to the one prior. Now we'll get... Yeah, so we didn't see any movement whatsoever in that one. So what I did is I merged it together into one big photograph. And I put a picture of wedding balloons with people releasing them. And to see the comparison um, that there, I think, is the moon or the sun going down. It's mostly likely the moon, and these are the street lamps, of course, that we looked at. So, that's the four frames. So the three and four didn't change, they just overlaid. So that's kind of strange, uh, a red flag there. Now, these other ones, as we saw, had one, two, three, four, wasn't it? One, two, three, four. And then it changed to the next one with a, a V shape going this way. Now, Seems too much movement in there uh, f f for the balloons. So it tells me maybe there were some images missing. Or maybe it's been taken out of order. So there was a wee bit suspicious in there. And at first I didn't re read uh, his new update. Because he had access to the real photographs, I was just taking it from screen snapshots. And we'll get to that in a minute. So, do you call someone that mucks around with the photo order a hoaxer or just um, a fraud? I suppose, in a sense, they are a hoaxer, right? If they muck around with the order of a photograph to try and fit their narrative, right? So I guess they could be a hoaxer in that sense. Uh, but they didn't actually release the balloons themselves and they were honestly taking the photographs and thought they could um, con people thinking that that was more of the Phoenix Lights. So again, I suppose that makes them a scammer or a hoaxer rather than mistaken. Uh, mistaken or pranked, pranked, pranked. <laughs> uh, my tongue's still swollen, sorry. So um, we could check events that night to see if there's any wedding parties where they released a lot of balloons at the end of the night. Um, bound to be some people having weddings on that particular night, surely. 
some birthday party or something like that where they used the big white balloons in that area so you have to see if there's any but it's so long ago now but if you're a new investigator that's the thing you'd look into right so we probably can't find that information out um looks like we've got two likes on it but i don't think john actually replied i find a lot of these big channels uh, ignore you uh, looks like it's not going to show me who who liked it but i don't think john did um unfortunately so where the balloons go in that way or would they come in this way and he just cherry picked this one here and another one uh where it seemed to form the v-shape we already determined that definitely um oh, where's the video that um it's definitely sky the look they're definitely legit photographs of something but they're not ufos <laughs> They're definitely balloons so if we get this one here now with the other light source i don't know if it's a moon it certainly looks a lot different color like it's going through atmospherics here or sun just going down the lights are coming on uh, so Let's have a look at that one. Next. Let's scale it up. What we do to study your face. Uh, so to me this looks like that would have been before the other one and I think that one come up here and that one went up here and formed that pattern that we see on the first one and this one just simply blew off the, in the other direction or popped or disappeared completely right once it pops it's going to come down now could that be enough moonlight there to illuminate these ones without having an internal light i guess it's possible it does sort of have that orange tinge to it doesn't it so if we um just save that back If we now adjust the filters, we can see they're definitely individual light sources. So you can see the light post being lit up more in this one. And the sun or moon, blood moon. So you can see here the sky background is constant uh, maybe even some slight movement here where they're not quite circular anymore right so it looks like the wind and the rebit stretched so how was he snapping these photographs was he leaning on top of a car roof a fence line and if it's a minute apart um you'd expect some hand shapement you know the, the the horizon not to be so constant but to me maybe he's just got a, a lean against something here so we can't discount that out but you can see here the sky definitely is constant behind atmospherics
Now you can see how the light source here is enough to get to the edge of these ones to light them up more. That one start to fade over there. They're brighter here. But they're within that band of light, as we saw through the filtering. So you can see there how much that light source is scattering through the atmosphere. But it does look like the balloons are being released somewhere here and they're just going up and drifting off there as the air current changes direction. Um, as it gets higher up. And especially in a mountain range. Um, doesn't look like it's Photoshop. But it looks to me like there could be another balloon behind this one here. And it looks like another one coming up here. So maybe it's coming up here. Up. And then drifting off this way. So I reckon the photographs are in out of order. Could it be a mistake? Um, or could he be trying to use them for a hoax? So definitely not on a craft anyway. So let's go back and listen to the interview now. I think we've done enough analysis on it. That uh, Get to that in just a minute. But I want to show you guys the actual interview. Now, keep in mind, when I conducted this interview, no forensic analysis. You guys may be a little bit aware now with Reddit exploding on analyzing these photos uh, a little bit. Keep in mind, I recorded that uh, that interview prior to really diving in. Because again, I wanted more of that just more sincere interaction without having uh, the taint of, of internet noise and rumors and allegations and all that stuff. So here is my interview with the witness. Here it is. So joining me on the phone right now is Andrew. Now he is the witness who posted the photograph that kind of started me getting interested in this and reaching out to him. And in turn, he sent me the original four photographs that he took. Andrew, thank you so much for taking taking the time out of your day to speak with me. No problem. So I really appreciate your time. So so I, I want to just dive into to what you remember. I mean, uh, truth be told, we both know it's been quite some time since the event in 1997. So I don't expect you to remember every single detail. But I want to start with a question before we dive into that, that I think is probably on many people's minds. Ha have you released these photos before, or is this the first time that you've ever posted them or released them? No, this was the first time I released them. Was um, there... I had totally forgot about them. Gotcha. And, uh, I saw something on TV, it was the news or something, and they mentioned the Phoenix light. And I thought, oh yeah, I remember I have those photos. And that's what jogged my memory to remember that I took them. Gotcha. And that was recently you saw some something on TV that jogged your memory? Yeah. It was, it was the news or something talking about the Phoenix Lights and then what's going on with the government and UFOs. Now, correct and I was me. like, oh, I got photos like that. After the event in 97, just out of curiosity, wasn't there a lot of publicity locally? Now, I'm Southern California born and raised. Yes, we heard about it, but I don't know how much was bantered about on the news at the time in Phoenix. Was was there? So, is there a red flag there? Yeah, because it was all over the place. The Phoenix lights on the news channels, and if you saw lights in the sky, uh, you wouldn't forget about them, right? You wouldn't take photographs of some lights in the sky, thinking they're unusual. And forget about it when there was a lot of news talk and newspapers and everywhere at that time about the Phoenix Light. And you say, oh, yeah, I might have some extra 
footage of the events, right? And you'd be trying to sell it to the newspapers. So to me, his story doesn't uh, figure out there. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, just carry on. There not a whole lot of coverage, or did you just not? not but the photographs do look legit, uh, as we saw, right, uh, through the analysis. But there, yeah. whether the order is correct is another thing. Of the of the things moving, which direction, um, we're yet to find out. Not see anything at the time. I did. I did not pay attention. Um, I come from a really religious background, and we. We really didn't pay attention to stuff like that. You know, we always thought, oh, it's just... All right, so does that counteract the red flag start with that it was all on the newspapers and stuff? I suppose if you're religious and maybe you didn't watch, didn't have a TV in the house, uh, newspapers, and uh, you didn't talk to people much because you're religious, um, I suppose it's possible. So, yeah, that, that's not really much of a red flag now, you see. Uh, because some people are like that. <laughs> so let's just keep on going. Hogwash or whatever. I so gotcha. I didn't pay attention to it. I just kind of blocked it out, I guess. I don't know. And it just wasn't important to me at the time in that place in my life. Gotcha. Okay. So let me take you back to that night. You you posted these photographs, or you sent four to, to me. I think I heard that you may have posted a couple more uh, on Reddit, which is where you originally posted. But you had sent me the four original photos. Let me take you back to that night. What do you remember when you captured these photos? Um, I remember I was in the parking lot. I was doing a security guard at that time. That was my job. Mm-hmm. And we had to go to specific spots for uh, our security. We had to be at certain areas at certain times. So I had to really pay attention to the time of, you know, I had to be at this area at one time and this area at another time because my boss was really strict. So uh, parking lot, and I remember just, you know, doing my rounds looking for damage on the property uh, graffiti, things like that. And we had to carry a camera with us just in case we found something like that because then we had to die. Uh, so he said he had a camera to document stuff. So all that sort of checks out to me there. Uh, some people said he said he took it with a smartphone, but uh, definitely on this interview, he's def definitely said a camera. And we know that smartphones didn't have cameras back then. So not too sure... He made a mistake by saying it was a camera phone, <laughs> or what, I don't know. But uh, according to some person that replied to me on the comments, which has disappeared. But anyway, uh, he's definitely saying camera. Document it in our reports at the end of our shift. Okay. And so that... we had to take pictures of anything damaged or whatever, and I remember seeing... Looking up and seeing the like couple of lights, and they were moving around. They weren't moving fast, but they weren't they weren't like lined up in the V shape yet. They were just yeah. So that checks out for balloons for a party being released, right? He's seen that individually moving around a wee bit with the wind gusts. Um, yeah, so he's not saying it's a craft or anything. He just saw them as individual lights going up. kind of up there and I thought those can't be planes because they're way too close to each other that you know they couldn't they'd be hitting each other so you're you're a so, uh, Arizona native right so obviously you see a lot of airplane traffic yeah I was born and raised here and I've you can see when the planes are coming into the valley you know they they're so far apart you know because they're landing at Sky Harbor but this wasn't nothing like that these were too close together and uh there was no sound, you know, so I knew they couldn't be helicopters because mm -hmm. I didn't hear any sound. It's actually eerily quiet then. And so you take the the first photograph in the sequence per the metadata was the photograph, and I've shown them here on the on the channel in this video, but that was the one of the four where they were not in formation. So when you yeah, were they were not in formation. They were moving like they were they were moving towards each other or getting ready to do something, and I was like. 
it's like, what is that? You know? And you felt that they were all, each individual light represented a different craft. As some witnesses said, they felt the triangle when they saw it was one complete craft. But you felt that they were obviously all independent craft that, that you were yeah, looking at. I think they were independent from what I saw. It didn't, didn't seem like a big giant craft. They seemed to be moving all independently. And then once Which they... sounds just like we didn't believe the Paddy Beat balloons being released. Or Chinese lanterns, but I don't think they're Chinese lanterns. Because our analysis didn't say... So, gotten like a formation, which was like a V. Then they moved together, and I could. What I'm going to describe it is almost like when you see uh, in Arizona, we get the geese going by every, you know, that time of year, mm -hmm. and they, they're all flying in a V. That's what they were like. They were like moving in a V together all at once, like they had finally all come together, and then they were. Yeah, okay, so you know, you get. To bright um, balloons in the sky they're obviously going to form patterns and V shape is obviously going to be one of the most common ones especially if the higher ones are in a opposite current of wind going the opposite direction because you get the currents changing different layers every few hundred feet from the ground because of heat rising so uh, we've talked about that in the past but we won't go over it again Hey, we've got someone joining us. Hold and hold me. How's it going? Yeah, all good here. And we're just having a look at this Phoenix light case of new photographs. So to me, so far, the interview seems very really genuine. Uh, to call him a hoaxer at this stage, um, I don't think so. So could that mean that maybe... Uh, he renumbered the the photos and got a couple out of sequence by mistake, rather than being a, a true hoaxer. So we've got to give him a benefit of the doubt, I think, in this case. But um, he didn't say it was one big craft, so it doesn't really fit with the Phoenix light of incident. But he saw something on the same night, uh, which had clearly lighted bl uh, lead balloons. Uh, the question is, did they have leads back then? So I had to do some investigation to see if there was any uh, wedding things. But I mean, it's a bit hard to, because the information is so old now, but hard to find any wedding balloons where they had do you do it yourself uh, lights inside. Because now you get them from China, of course. Uh, you get everything from China pre made. But I'm pretty sure someone out there would have given the wedding parties a wee bit more, you know, effect with lights and side balloons, uh, whether it was LEDs or some other pen torch light bulb that uh, sucked the batteries dry pretty quick. Uh, so it's possible. Um, I don't think there was any torch, uh, like um, any um, heavy torch in them, but I don't also think there was any uh, candle wax uh, flames or the, anything like that used so yeah I know I used to have little toys back then that lit up with batteries with LEDs so I'm pretty sure someone some smart ass would have figured out something how to make a little control circuit uh, to use some of the LEDs back in that time compared to what we got now but we got really bright ones now but, um, yeah, uh, there's also reports from people who it flew over saying it blocked out the light sky. Yes, I said that at the very beginning of the show <laughs> when we're talking about the summary of it. So, uh, as we've proven, this, these photographs are definitely individual and, and you can see the night sky behind. Uh, but some might say that's part of the cloaking where it f takes the background of the stars and shines it through itself, or night sky at least. Um, but I would have thought there would have been some sort of distortion if that did that, you know. 
there'd be some clues to it. I don't think it'd be perfect uh, myself. Um, there'd be like, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the, the alien that comes down hunting, uh, predator movies. Be like that, you see a little shimmering where it's bending the light. But anyway. Let's just it's move together, nice. you know. Mm -hmm. And how long do you do you recall watching this? Oh, it wasn't very long. I think maybe five, six minutes total. Okay. I think, but that was so long ago. I just I know I didn't have a lot of time to sit there and stare at it. It was like, here, let's take these pictures. Yeah. You know, and then I I like forgot about them. You know, I wasn't something I was. Well, I think his story checks out all right. Um, you know, the balloons would have moved on, popped maybe, and then disappeared very quickly. Um, so it fits everything he's talked about there. And why he didn't report it being religious and not really paying attention to news or having TV or all that sort of stuff. So that sort of makes total sense. Uh, is that the Mormons that don't really have the, all that technology in the house nowadays uh, what's the other ones called um they ride the buggies <laughs> uh what are they called yeah you know what i'm talking about anyway but um yeah so yeah i did comment back but my comments have vanished i think and google have silenced me <laughs> I'm not seeing any of my comments there. Bit of a shame. But Twitter, they are on. So I'll just post the link to the Twitter analysis I did, which shows they're going to be wind balloons or party balloons. Uh, what were they called in the buggies? Um, What's the name they have for them? <laughs> That's some of the tip of the tongue, but I can't. Mormons. Uh, uh, they wear black mostly, don't they, in the hats? Uh, and they build the barns. Is that the ones uh, from that movie of um, Harrison Ford in it? But yeah, my analysis. Uh, what they called? Uh, we'll find out. Uh, religious group buggies. <laughs> Amos, that's what I was looking for. All right, he used it. <laughs> so you can always find it with Google. So if he was like uh, one of these guys that sort of left uh, the Amos group, uh, it would make sense that he might not be paying much attention to newspapers or watching the TV all the time. Yeah, so he may not have known about the Phoenix event at all. So I don't think he's a hoaxer. I think he was just... He's being honest. He took saw these lights in the sky, took some photographs, and they formed the V shape. And years later, he saw the news reports uh, when he posted on Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> so yeah, um, but uh, of course, if we go down to his web page, so this is what I posted here on his uh, thing but we can't see the comment anymore uh, I said I think renaming the image was possible mistake a, min a minute apart it looks uh, calm night ideal for outside events the contents seem a le legit not photoshopped here there's just a bunch of balloons being released from an event that's all Harry explains how they move matches up, although they look like LED balloons from Wedding. I think LED come out 2008. 
I think the first latex LED balloons come out in 2008. But it doesn't mean that someone, as I said, uh, may have added the special uh, to the wedding parties lit balloons with do do it yourself LED balloons, right? Uh, but you say these are 1997. So could it could it also be that it's more like 10 years further on as well, where it was 2008 and he photographed them and uh, he edited the metadata, which is possible. You can edit the metadata and change the, the timestamps. So that could also be what happened there. Maybe he was being deceptive to try and turn them into a phoenix lights. Uh, a thing to maybe make some money from it or get some fame from it so there's also another possibility so yeah um, I'm still tossed up whether he was a hoaxer or just mistaken but uh, either way uh, the photos are real uh, the metadata may not be real so I had a look at uh, various web pages on LEDs, which is kind of interesting on the history of LEDs. Now the bright blue ones come out, uh, which they still use today, which are ridiculously bright. And they, I remember you used to have to put some blue tack or tape over the LED if you had like a, one of these LED bright blue lights on some, some gadget in your bedroom, right? In 2014, the bright white ones, RGB ones, come out where you can um, control it with Wi-Fi and all that sort of business. But it turns out in 1995 was the first white LEDs, uh, which is a couple of years before the Phoenix lights. So the white LEDs were out there. So someone could easily have added them to latex balloons even back then. So that's the research I did on it. Yeah, what did this guy say? Interviewed the guy. I'm not convinced at all. I took these pictures and forgot I had them. Well, we just been through all that, uh, breaking it down. Uh, the interview. Okay. And uh, where's his web page link? Here. Oh, here it is here, is it? And oh, that's YouTube, is it? Um, where's this web page link? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Is that his web page link? Oh, here we go. And um, Black Vault put it, puts it up on his website, right? He did some more analysis after the interview and saw that uh, the metadata uh, was at one minute apart on the last two photographs, which were identical. So would the balloon stay there for a minute? Uh, it doesn't seem to make sense, does it? So to me, it suggests that maybe he was a wee bit deceptive there and tried to edit and say... Um, that the, the lights were still hanging there a minute after, but he, f he got the order mix messed up. Uh, turns out uh, one, what does he say here? This one here, 7-7 seven, seven had the, the time set for 26 minutes past, and this had 25 minutes past. And the numbers are the wrong way around, right? Suggests that it's been tampered with. The metadata, that is. And I think it might be just the same image, as you can see here, the identical. And he's just duplicated it and tried to edit the timestamp to make, make it look like that they're still hanging in the sky a minute later. So to me, that makes him a possible hoaxer. Uh, of course, Greenwell puts up all the metadata here. It goes on and on and on a bit. He summarises it up the top here. So he wants to class him as a hoaxer now. But definitely the photographs are real. Uh, but they're not any UFOs.
Uh, I feel I may be a bit more neutral than is warranted in this after this video is uploaded. The uh, too much zoom on it. The article was programmed. I made a discovery which slipped by my prior to creating this. So he goes talks about 1878. Having twenty uh, let's see. Let's see if we get it right here. The key element in all this I missed until just before publishing is the fact that Cam O one eight seven seven JPEG raw files available on the link. The metadata states the photo was taken at 8.26 and of course uh, the other one 8.25 and of course uh, in sequence that one should be bigger than the last one, right? It's, it's round the wrong way which kind of suggests that they've been tampered with that's basically what he's saying there Ideally, I delete it all and have a different approach. Re-edit, redo, re-upload. However, I want to show you all the investigative techniques. Although I did quite a lot more on my presentation, <laughs> but we didn't have the original photographs. Update shortly after I posted this investigation, the Reddit user uh, managed show deleted their account after having it for 10 years but then if you're being hassled right and being called names and insults um did he delete it or did uh, the bods delete it right like you made a swore back at them broke the rules and they can delete your account so that to me doesn't suggest that it's he's guilty or hoaxer something else may happen there right he may have just got sick of all the hate deleted his accounts this is another highly suspect action and more in line with what i'd expect from a hoaxer yeah i don't know could be taken either way i think but anyway i tried to keep balance on this stuff i'm not gonna I uh, throw the person under a bus here. I think maybe everything he said seemed to fit my analysis. And uh, he may have um, somehow duplicated the photograph, maybe as part of a hoax as well. But could he have done it by mistake? Uh, anyway, doing it by mistake. I don't know. I know the early cameras you had to use software to download it. You didn't have like memory cuts. I think he's actually got some pictures off the camera used. Is it on this? Or has he deleted it now? Uh, where's the picture of the camera? Here we go. So it was an LG LDC F20 1997. So it was around. Looks like it's a nice camera, a bit better than my one. And it cost me an arm and a leg at the time too. Camera Museum. I still got it actually in the drawer. It weighs a ton too. But it still took better cat uh, photographs than <laughs> some of the smartphones I had. <laughs> Even though it was only three megapixels. It was CCD and it was only 4.3 aspect, but it still took better pictures than many of the cheap smartphones I had. And it didn't suffer some of the artifacts of movement, uh, like, uh, but then again, it didn't do video, unfortunately, but um, just pictures. So how did you transfer the photographs from that? Was it a memory card? Does it say... Well, I know some had memory cards and you had to be pretty rich to afford the memory card for it 
Uh, mine's got a memory card or, or flash memory or something slot on it. <laughs> um, there you go, internal storage for megabytes. But doesn't external storage, it's got a dash. So I don't think it had it, you know, you had to transfer it via software. Is it possible the software um, stuffed up the naming of the files and timestamps? Uh, it's possible. So let's uh, keep it to that. Uh, definitely not the Phoenix Lights anyway. A guy may have been a bit deceptive, maybe trying to get some fame out of it. Or he may just be, like you said, being honest and... But he'd have to explain why that last photo had changed. So, a bit shame he didn't actually investigate first before the interview. <laughs> anyway, um, it's on that link I posted, but I'll post the, the full breakdown here for, on John's page. John's breakdown with the camera used. Uh, were there any reports on the size of the light source? In the original Phoenix lights, bigger than a artificial human. Not too sure what you mean. They look like balloons to me, <laughs> you know. Um, they don't look like really big objects at all. And it looks like they're being released up from down here and going upwards. An air current and then going this way. Uh, and a current going back the other direction. That's what it looks like to me. Oh, nothing to do with UFOs though. Yeah, you gotta be. I, th I think you gotta be brave to try and pull the war over Reddit users at least. Uh, they're more critical. Uh, they're pretty good ufologists on Reddit, um, and they do check out things, fact things, right? They know Tyler Glotner is a f fraud. So they know Third Phase are. They're not stupid. <laughs> so you have to be pretty f brave to try and. If you're a hoaxer, put up stuff on Reddit and try and get away with it. Because <laughs> you will be get caught out. Uh, we can get rid of that. Uh, so... That uh, is my take on it anyway. And uh, let's just talk about uh, camera makes now. between night vision. So let's uh, just bring up the editor again. I'll just break it down in lay terms to start with. Um, might not be the best way to do it, but we'll do it this way. So what types of camera we got? We got um, home security. Uh, that people use for filming strange things in the sky. So you got uh, security cams, as we call it. Oh, looks a bit small now. Bold it maybe. Security cam, and of course they use infrared. And then we got um, flares, forward looking, and then we got um, night vision. 
And we've got a uh, new one's coming out now called Color. Night Vision, I'll spell it the American way. Uh, what, what ones? Other ones that I've missed. I've uh, got Night Vision there. Night Vision. Uh, any other ones I've forgotten about? Thermal. Uh, yeah, that's Fleur, isn't it? Thermal, same. I think that's the same, isn't it? Uh, thermal. I think they're the same. Let me just check that out. Um, is the same as thermal? I think it is. <laughs> yeah, see, look, it's come up with fluid there. That's the difference between fluid and thermal. Uh, let's see. Well, obviously, this is forward looking. Active IS system, use shortwave, uh, passive. Um, looks like there might be something slightly different about them. Uh, so you can see it gets a bit complicated. <laughs> so we got uh, thermal. But they're all using sort of the same thing. <laughs> Invisible light. The light we don't see with our eyes. Uh, so security cameras, from what I understand, use uh, what's called reflective... Uh, reflective... Infrared. Alright, so what does that actually mean? So if you take a picture from my security camera, um, that's using reflective infrared. Now we know that plants aren't very hot, so why are these bright white, right? So basically what's happening, uh, we can see there's some other stuff in the background there. So if I bring that into the editor and lighten it up a bit. Open. So this is outside. Let's uh, brighten it up a wee bit. And we might be able to see the other trees in the background. Okay, and we can, in fact there may have been some fog last night, and you can see here it almost looks like green, green, grey, uh, there's the letterbox there, but it does, definitely looks like there could be some fog that night, fog last night, this was from last night, and you can see there it looks like and there was something happening. So it looks like there was some fog. But you can see we've got a column of trees uh, going down the driveway here. And it looks like a street lamp in the background here that's lighting up the road. And a tree over the other side of the road. But, but, but by... Looking at this, we're not actually seeing the heat of the the plants, right? And the letterbox in the driveway. You can see that's that's what's called reflective. So uh, let's see. Let's create a new image and explain it. So uh, we've got an image for a camera. I suppose we could use. Um, 
Köln. Okay, and around the cone they have uh, these infrared LEDs uh, that emit uh, infrared light on a certain wavelength, constant wavelength, right? Uh, how are we going to do that? I don't know. Um, but um, around the outside of the security cameras, uh, they have like um, circles of LEDs. Going around like so. I'll bring up a picture in a minute, <laughs> but uh, I just want to draw a picture just to explain what's going on in the security camera image. Uh, that probably do. And it is our sensor coming back in. And these are mitten light, I'll just do red beams. So these are spreading light out. And of course the closer you get to it, um, the more ref more of this is reflected back. That's why it's called reflective infrared. Mm, there's my mic moving away from my mouth here. What's going on here? Uh, still sound alright? <laughs> well, like I said, uh, you reckon my picture's blurry. I could probably do some really good fake UFO stuff and have the most popular UFO channel under the sun. Because I could do it better, because I understand uh, how to get it the best, you know. Uh, what's going on with my microphone here? Okay, is that better? Alright, uh, so we need a person standing in the way. So we've got the beams of light going out and they're hitting trees and all sorts of things. So we could draw a tree. Okay, we've got trees. We've got shrubs in that picture. So we need something that's going to be a tree. Uh, Ace of spades or something like that. Uh, where's the ace of spades? Uh, there's clubs. So we've got a shrub. That would be clubs. Um, uh, different greens, maybe. Uh, as, as you saw the picture, it was actually illuminated quite bright. So we'll just make it yellow. And we've got uh, little vertical trees going down the driveway, which weren't so bright. Mm, where is the spades? <laughs> what can I see spades here? Clubs. Oh, there's a spade. Yeah. So we had shrubs going down the driveway. And they weren't so bright. So what's happening? Well, wow. orange. So these beams would bounce back, right? Ah, got to change the pen back to the sensor in the camera going back this way. And lights reflect back that way. And these ones, because these are reflecting a lot more light back at the sensor they're a lot brighter okay that's got a lot of light coming in flooding in that it's so overexposed because it's so close to the camera and of course that's what happens when you get a bug flying uh, which people say are UFOs right so we need a one for a bug flying around there we are you little bug uh, we'll just do that one there. Looks like a f f blobby thing. So that could be flying around here. And it'll look like a UFO, right? 
because this is reflecting light off it. So we're not actually seeing um, like visible light. It's bouncing back and it's forming light based on what's being reflected back. All right. And because it's moving around quite fast, flapping its wings, and we don't see that, it sort of looks blurry, right? So it could come right into the lens here, land on it, and actually look like a big bright white UFO uh, crawling around the lens and all sorts of things, right? <laughs> so yeah, we need to get a picture of, of a home security camera. Now, I'm not too sure how many people out there didn't didn't know how home security cameras work. But now you do. And now you know why the crap for UFO photographs. And you shouldn't be putting them up on YouTube. Uh, I know All Things Assist is one of these people that putting up planes passing by in the sky and uh, all that. Of course, uh, they do emit their own infrared light, which the sensor still picks up, right? But if you're like a cold object and the light bounces off it, you're still like a tree, <laughs> a shrub. They're not they're not giving off body heat, right? Um, they're going to be cold. Uh, there's no reason why they should be like the hottest thing in the picture. Um, that's because the way the camera works, right? Here. And these trees we can hardly see going up the driveway. Okay. You can see them in the background there just. But they're far away from the lights emitting. So they're, they're reflecting less back to the sensor. And these are right close to the camera. So the leaves that are closest to the camera and reflecting in the right angle back at the camera are bright white. Doesn't mean they're super hot and all this is over, all cold over here. Okay, so that's different than the Nimitz video cameras. Okay, so we can put that one to bed. <laughs> then Swamp Gas. Yeah, well, obviously there's fog there that is water droplets and also reflect some of the light back at the camera. Yeah, so this is why we I do this sort of stuff because people can learn. So we might just keep that there for reference point. Now Fleur, on the other hand, is a bit more complicated. Is actually not transmitting off infrared beams like the, the security cameras, but it's trying to amplify uh the ii light coming back to the camera so whatever's been given off as heat is what we've seen there in different shades of blacks to whites so again <coughs> <coughs> oh terrible when you get a tickle in the throat oh, sorry about that uh, that's why speakers at these conferences always have a bottle of water, right? So, uh, forward looking fleur. Uh, now we're going to do it. Good question. That should be black. Why, why, why? There we go. So, if you've got a distant jet, so I'm explaining it in lay terms at the moment. <laughs> then we can read out all the technical pages on it. Uh, jet, jet, jet. I know there's one here that looks like a plane. Where is it? Ah, I meant to click off it first. Uh, there we go. Oh, I uh, can't win, can we? <laughs> Let's go back to a cone airplane. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right, so, um, obviously, it's flying away from us. 
and they have engines on them giving off lots of heat. So let's um, draw those. We've got engines giving off a lot of heat. And of course, um, that can also reflect off the body of the craft, which then, unlike the security cameras, is enough for it to bounce off the heat off in different directions into the sensor. without having to transmit any to create reflective. Now this is the problem. Um, the engines create so much heat that um, that's what causes a lot of problem with the debating. So we see the tic-tac like that. All right. I uh, should fill it in. We see the the back end of the aircraft like that, right? <laughs> and this thing uh, is rotating around, uh, according to Mick West. And he's saying, because the plane is invisible, uh, because it's hidden behind this, uh, what he calls the glare. Uh, so that makes more sense to you, I hope. Uh, now I've explained that, but compared to the security camera. So in there would be the plane, but obviously uh, the, the rear end of it, which we can't sort of rotate around the image, unfortunately. That'd be a really good feature if we could have a 3D one and we could rotate it the angles we wanted. But uh, yeah, so he's saying what we're seeing is the heat of the engine rotating in the Nimitz footage and not actually the skin of the craft. But he's making assumptions here, McQuest. Uh, so it could actually be uh, the skin of the craft we're seeing and it forms that strange shape. Um, so let's see if I can draw it. So it's more something like that, wasn't it? Let me it had little wing tips on it uh, come out the side. Uh, let's see. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. So it had sort of little bits sticking out the side like that. Okay, so that could easily be little wings in the skin of the craft, right? Like a tic tac. That's um, that we're seeing the skin of the craft rather than the heat of the engines. And this is why it's, why Mick West could be wrong. But then again, he's got hold of pictures with F eighteen, is it? Um. He said that these bits here were reflecting off um, the wings, the tail fin, and that was the two jet engines at the back. Like um, we've gone over this in the past. Like uh, there was the two jet engines of a F-18 like that. And the heat was reflecting part of the tail going up that way. Um, maybe the angle's not quite right here. Something with the tail going up that way. And there was something underneath. Uh, maybe a camera pod or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, that's what he was saying. So back to the list again, where's my list gone? 
So that's Fleur. Uh, Why is it called forward looking though? Uh, well, maybe because it's looking forward. <laughs> uh, let's see. Why is it called forward looking? Turn forward looking is used to distinguish fixed forward looking thermal imaging from sideways tracking infrared system, also known as push broom images and other thermal images such as gimbal mounted imaging systems, handheld imaging systems and the like. Okay. The gimbal. So does that mean that it's not forward looking then the gimbal ones? You can see how com more complicated it gets all the time. <laughs> what does FLIR mean? Unless I got the wrong name. Forward looking, no, infrared. What's the difference between FLIR and thermal? Active oh yeah, systems use short wave infrared. So we make the area of interest. I think that's the same with security cameras they're talking about here. Some of the infrared energy is reflected back here. Yeah, that's what that's we're talking about for security cameras. And two to generate an image. Yep. So it's a bit like radar really. <laughs> Bouncing back and forth an image. Thermal image assistance use mid to long wave IR energy. Thermal images are passive and only sense difference in heat. So you get different shades. Okay, so Active IR is security cameras and thermal is FLIR then. So uh, that list I made, they're the same thing. So they're the same thing. Thermal and FLIR. Let's try to, try to draw a box over it so it's not working. Why, I don't know. So they're the same thing. So that's what they're calling um, active infrared, is it? And uh, thermal. And forward looking. Still trying to get a head around that bit. Uh, is used to fix forward looking thermal imaging from sideways tracking infrared systems. Uh, push boom. It's basically we need some images of that. Let's see if we've got an image of that one. Then it might be more obvious. <laughs> it's bringing up a broom. Thermal. Images. Mm, there we go. Is that the. So it looks like it's. Talking about brooms, not uh, infrared. <laughs> Uh, what's that one? There we go. It might be the one we're after. Sideways scanning. Okay, can we make head or tail of this? Uh, not really. Sideway looking. I 
That's probably the one we need to look at. So we've got an airplane. Swift width uh, scan dimension. So it was almost like um, scanning back and forth, building up the image, like a um, flatback scanner, I guess. Where a forward looking one is always fixed and the light coming in uh, different uh, wavelengths, uh, different temperatures is interpreted as different shades, right? So this one's actually scanning and actually trying to build up a picture by looks of it by looking at that. Anyway, um, so that's what it means by forward looking, though it's fixed. The key is fixed there. And the other one is sweeping. And the gimbal obviously moves around a bit, doesn't it? And other thermal imaging. So they're all roughly similar. They're using the same sort of um, light. But some are actively scanning it and trying to build it up more by scanning it. And this one's just fixed and it's just taking what's coming in and amplifying it and uh, not overlaying it I guess uh, from what we can tell from that information anyway <coughs> hey Plex how's it going uh, good morning from the other side you're up early aren't you what time now five o'clock I think you don't normally show up for another couple of hours yeah, we're just trying to break down cameras. So we got uh, home security cameras that are called active. Um, we found out active infrared. And uh, and one's called passive. Um, this is passive, I guess. Basically, it's like a radar. It sends out infrared and it bounces back at the sensor and it forms an image well this one here amplifies uh, infrared from distance objects different wavelengths and it colorizes it and night vision again uh, we'll get into that now now uh, why is it not active AI and I think this was passive and uh, yeah. forward looking is fixed so it's always looking at the same regional sky and then you got the uh, thermal cameras which is uh, what firemen use which are the same sort of thing and it colorizes the different wavelengths of heat coming in. Um, I think it, they, they call it um, some sort of filter spectrum or something. Um, we'll come across that when we go through the technical pages here. <laughs> but we'll just break down the different lay terms of these cameras so far. So that's reflective. Anything closer to the camera is reflecting more of the infrared light back from the LEDs. Uh, infrared LEDs back at the camera and you can see the distant trees are not so visible and we tried to explain it with this diagram here uh, 7am oh, you must go to bed early okay so night vision so what's night vision night vision as we've seen are like green screens right so, so this uh, See if we can draw a picture of one of those. Um, start with the cone again. So we've got night vision, and you've got probably a plane. 
Uh, plane in the sky. Flying away from us again. And uh, what's that one? Mistake up there. So, and we got stars. Normally it's at night time. Well, I guess it would be all at night time. Night vision is the key, is night. <laughs> so it's going to be used at night time. And so we need some stars. I uh, suppose there's a good star. So we've got little stars around. And planets. All emitting light from star or sun. So this is night vision. So how does it work? So we want some visible light bouncing off the stars on objects and stuff. So we've got the star light coming down. Why is it not red? Uh, what's happened? Okay, we've got light coming off stars bouncing off the plane. Uh, full moon and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the plane may have lights on it also, uh, which I haven't drawn on, but the plane may have some lights on it. Let's uh, see if we can draw some lights on it. Uh, that'll do for light, I guess. Tail fin light, collision avoidance light, <laughs> wing lights. Okay, so that's going to be seen in light in all different directions too. Oops, need the line. So it's coming back to the sensor. All, all these uh, reflecting off the plane back at the sensor. Oops, I won't draw too many, but you get the idea, right? Um, so it's reflecting normal light, very low light that you can't see with your eyes, uh, back at the sensor of this night vision. So what it does is, um, it's got some electronics, a black box or so to speak. Um, that uh, amplifies um, each of these photons. Uh, this, this is where it gets into science. <laughs> so light is called photons. Okay. And as you know, there's the thing called electron photon pairs. So the photons come here and on the sensor, they release electron. So, um, probably need to draw a separate thing for it. Uh, maybe we can do it with the box. Uh, let's see. So, these photons coming in here go through and touch on the box and then release a electron. And what they can do is they know that photon existed and they can then use that electron as a, you know, as a dot, like a photon of light as a dot of various uh, frequencies and amplify it. So now they send it off down here, go down this way. and they amplify it with some various techniques amp, amp it up and then they have down here the famous green screen which I draw a circle 
Green, 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 green screen. Uh, which shows up these bright, uh, the photon, uh, the, the amplified voltage of um, the electrons. Amped up with voltage, current, voltage, current, or both. And then it makes these, uh, makes that little dot there on the screen, right? And makes us able to see it, even though we can't see it with our eye. Uh, this sensor picked up very faint uh, visible light, amp uh, amplified it up and shines it onto a phosphorus screen. Uh, uh, phosphorus, how do you spell that? Um, Mm, good question. I don't know how to spell it. My mind's gone blank. <laughs> Phosphor. That's P H, isn't it? P H, not F. Phosphor. 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 Phosphorus. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, it doesn't look right. Sure, it's got another P in it. Four, four, fuss, fuss, fuff, for us. Something like that, isn't it? Green phosphorus, and of course it glows green. This is where you see those um, cool bell triangles, right? Now you got the triangles. Yeah, here we go. Get the little triangles because it was going through on the front of this. Uh, so all these faint things got amplified through a filter at the start. Uh, so how would we do, change that <laughs> so people can understand? So they put a like a pinhole there with a triangle in the middle of it. Like that. Um, there you go. Okay, so all the lights going through form these little triangles. All sources of light form these triangles instead of circles uh, of the lens. So they create these artificial shapes. Okay. So yeah, even late terms is getting a bit more complicated now. And of course now we've got uh, colour night vision. Obviously that does away with... So we don't need to draw this again. It works the same principle, but instead of having a phosphorus screen here, um, they're able to break out the various frequencies in each of these um, um, photons. Uh, different voltages and electrons and create RGB, right? I think there might be some technical stuff on it. RGB. Uh, looks like everybody's left us again. Uh, it scared you off with too much technical. And then we can actually see things uh, like it's daytime. But it's actually running off low light reflected off stars and stuff. And I think that's the main cameras, security cameras, uh, thermal, and of course we've got thermal that uh, firemen use. Uh, might be some images. Firemen. Thermal. Instead of having just black and white and shades of grey to represent heat, uh, you can actually turn it to various colours, thermal camera, and they can see people behind doors, uh, just trying to find a good image, uh, you'd think I'd have one, 
But there you go. Um, gives you some idea. You can sort of see bodies and stuff through the door. Uh, even though it's thick with smoke and stuff, it sees through smoke. Because the walls are hotter, people's bodies are hotter. Thermal engine. Come on. Uh, was a good one. There you go. One off the house where you can see the heat coming through the windows. And the outside wall was blue for colder. And the top of the house where the roof is where heat rises is warmer. Okay, that's thermal. So it's in what uh, infrared heat. That we can't see with our eyes into an image for our eyes. If that makes sense. The same as the gimbal and uh, Nimitz videos. So, yeah. Really, I should leave it at that, but we can go through all the technical papers if you want. But hopefully everybody's now clear cut on the differences between each of them. And then you got your normal cameras of course set to see normal visible light. No, don't want to save it. Just want to close it. So I did actually put all these pages up, but I think I've probably explained it just as simple and as good as the pages. And probably should leave it there, really. And you can see this gets into the spectral right, the visible lights that we see. And one end has got the, the ultraviolet light, which burns our skin. And the other end we've got the infrared. So that's uh, purple, purple colours, going to the blue, ultraviolet colours, and the other one is getting into the reds. Uh, it's all electromagnetic energy, and the whole spectrum is, and just some we live with, and some kills us, you know, x-rays, and all that business going this way here. Gamma rays, X-rays, and up this end we've got microwaves, which will cook us. Radio waves and long-range radar, all that sort of business. And that's night vision using the phosphorus screen. And there's an example that you get on the screen. Uh, you can see that's. Um, the stars are reflecting off grass and that, and we can amplify it up on the green screen and see people. So it doesn't use infrared at all, just normal visible light. Low light conditions, by biological or technological means, night vision is made possible by a combination of two approaches, sufficient spectral range, and sufficient intensity range. Humans have poor night vision compared to many animals. Okay. Of course, uh, military needed it for shooting at night time. <laughs> mm, you got. Uh, Flight helmets. So that's night vision. Wikipedia. I won't bother sharing that link. Uh, night vision. There you go. Pilot with stereo goggles on. Flying around at night time. I suppose they can flip it up. Then. Okay. 
a little bit what animals can see better than this. Uh, there's uh, one of these night vision uh, monoscope glasses for one eye. And what happens is they put a camera at this end, smartphone, and they put this on this end. And that's what made those famous Corbell images. And there's the inside of it. And there you go. Basically what I said, RGB, normal light coming in. Uh, photo multiplier, some electronics, using electrons. And then they fire at the phosphorus screen, a, a beam of electrons, which then light up the phosphorus screen. I don't, almost spelled it right. Phosphorus, yeah, I spelled it right, didn't I? I think that's how I spelled it. Um, and more details. Patents, I guess. Clean on them. So that's a good one there. Yeah. Uh, firefighters, what's that one about there? Yeah. Thermal imaging cameras. It's talking about there on the same page. Image intensifier is another name for night vision. To take the tiny amount of light that's available in near darkness and boost it enough for our eyes. But sometimes there isn't enough light to do that. And the image intensifier goggles simply don't work. Suppose, for example, you're a firefighter. So now they're talking about um, thermal, which we discussed. And it's uh, looking at the various levels of heat and turn it into colour so we can visually see it. Uh, how's the audio sounding? Ah, oh, right, so yeah, I've got to go soon to uh, two and a half hours. I didn't realise it's going to take this long, but uh, you know how things go. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us anyway, for the side chat. And hopefully you go back and watch all of it. And really I do this stuff so people learn, you know. Knowledge is power, you know. And uh, if you understand the technology you're using and why you need different cameras, not just one camera for sky watching and the limitations of them and also the artifacts they make, then you can avoid being caught out with bats and birds flying around. So I'll just... Um, night vision and thermal. It's quite a good article, that one. Uh, what's the difference between thermal imaging and night vision? And we sort of discussed, discussed that already. One looks at the infrared and turns it into an image for a computer processing. And the other one amplifies photons of light using electrons back into light again to make it visible for our eyes. And here's some Im thermal images. Fluir of bats flying. And night vision, there's the green screen. So that's another good article there. Talking about the contrast of infrared illumination. But it's on Fluir mostly, that one. I'll just post that one there. Don't think we need to go over. I think I've covered it pretty good. Um, where's that one down? Uh, what's the next one? Night vision for human eyes could be possible after nano particle breakthrough. So this is some other article I found. Uh, posted in 2019, so the technology jump is going to happen. 
Uh, researchers from University of Massachusetts Medical School have been developing nanoparticles tested successfully on mice that could one day provide built-in vision for humans. Uh, how would they do that? <laughs> Inject it into your eyes? How would that affect your normal vision when you don't need night vision? Hmm. Won't it be better with contact lenses that you can pop in? Or sunnies? But then again, you don't have the problem with glass then. It's in the eyes. It's directly in the eyes. You're going to see as good uh, as an animal would, opposed to... Um, all the reflections and refractions you get using glass. So this one talks about more of the wavelengths and nanometer range. Because there's this thing called, as I put on this one here, on this chart here, the sun. So you got infrared, there's a quite range here. And you've got far infrared heaters, and you've got uh, near infrared, and then you've got the mis invisible light there, microwave, gamma rays, and whatnot going the other way. Uh, I'll post the link to that one. Oh, this is my other thing about, uh, what was it called? Far infrared and near infrared. Uh, when you hear infrared, you just think of a normal range, don't you? You normally think, oh, it's just uh, all one frequency, but it's not. It's actually a whole mix of frequencies going over a range, which they call, break it down into various infrared levels. Uh, and give it a name like mid-range infrared fire and near. And maybe they're exper experimenting with um, saying with UV lights. It has different uh, a, a spread, and they're trying to use different uh, regions of the ultraviolet to try and destroy virus in the lungs, which um, everyone attacked Trump over. <laughs> and night vision for human eyes. Did I post that one? I don't think I did. Advanced science, night vision, nano particles for eyes. I suppose you could make super troops. Okay, so we got that one. Aha, uh -huh, now we've got the house one, which is another good one. Thermal image converted into color for us to see all the different so dark blues to light blues are uh, colder than green to yellow to reds now there's the spectrum down the side here so that's very hot and that's very cold down the bottom uh, so it's got some interesting things for thermal. Uh, we ain't gonna read it out. I think everyone's sort of minds are blowing now. <laughs> and then the three types of infrared cameras. Uh, so we've sort of been through that. <laughs> uh, let's see if there's anything in this one we need long wavelength cameras, mid-range. I don't think we need to worry about that one. 
And what's this one? Near infrared imaging cameras. Near infrared is a subset of the infrared bands of the electromagnetic spectrum covering the wavelengths ranging from 0.7 to 1.4 microns. Near infrared is very close to human vision but removes the color wavelengths which results in most objects looking very similar to an image that has been converted to black and white. And there we go, that one. And you can start to see through the haze of the atmosphere and smog in the city and you can actually see the hillside. I suppose they say that see through haze, there you go. <laughs> Should add the scroll down. Uh, requires illumination at night, no colour. And cause sets not uh, is that reflective in fruit? Uh, it says for long distance images of results in sharp and less distortion, unlike thermal anim imagery. Okay, I think we've got it all covered anyway. I don't think I've got anything wrong there, but there's all the links if you want to read up on it more detail and I suppose we had a wrap up I did have a link to the forward looking infrared and there's one of the camera pods on a plane I suppose I could post a wiki on it there you go But the thing is, um, isn't that one of the gimbal? So it rotates around. So uh, that web page saying and gimbal, but really it's still forward looking, but it just rotates to always keep it um, level with the horizon, right? It's always the same way round, even if the plane's flying upside down. Well, I think I got all that right. <laughs> um, I think we learnt something new from there. And uh, we'll leave it there for today until the next uh, live show. And I'll just say goodnight to you now. And uh, take you on the roads, Enden. And stay safe from the virus, of course. Although, maybe it's only the Indian variant we need to really worry about now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>